Welcome back. So, back to Bedford. Um, again, Christmas shopping for my Etsy shop. And today actually has a theme because uh, I ended up getting a lot of teapots. Um, also, I did not bring my camera, the big, big Nikon. Where are you? Here. Yes. Because it's on that chair. That's where it's been. Uh, totally forgot it. So I had to film on my cell phone, which in my opinion is a much better phone than a camera. Nevertheless, the filming came out pretty clear and we have the benefit of some Christmas music in the background. So when we get back, we'll get started. Teapots. I barely walked into the door when I saw a really nice blue and peach lusterware tea set. And I get requests for this sort of thing. People will say you had a tea set in your shop and the tea set sold almost at once. And they're like, well, do you get any more? When they are good deals, yes. This one was not a stunning deal, but it was a good deal. It was $28 for the set, so let's take a look. All right, $28 lusterware tea set. I'll have to check, probably Japanese. Um, five cups, two, four, six saucers, two, four, five plates. I get a lot of requests for tea sets, so I think this is going to come with me. Now, that set, which is the teapot and lid, the uh, sugar bowl and lid, the creamer, uh, five cups, five saucers, six plates, something like that. I'm going to reduce the size of that so when it ends up in my shop, it's going to be the teapot, the sugar, the creamer, um, the cups and saucers, probably four cups, four saucers. That's probably what is going to go out in my shop. At this point in time, that is a manageable tea set. Originally, when that set was produced, it, it is Japan, by the way. When it was originally produced, it probably would have been uh, the, the teapot, the sugar, the creamer, probably eight cups and saucers, and probably another eight um, sort of salad plates, bread and butter plates. And it, there may have been more to the set than that. It was probably a reasonably large and complete set. The fact is, it could have been a full China service for eight. Hard to say. What happens over time, obviously, is the first thing to go is the teapot or the teacup. There is invariably a broken teacup somewhere along the line, and then a plate will get broken and whatever. Um, at this point, because the set has been whittled down and because people do not expect odd numbers of cups and saucers, bringing it down to service for four is probably a better idea than service for five. I know that's a little counterintuitive. You think, well, service for five, yeah. Service for five always says there are broken cups, whereas service for four does not necessarily, even though if you think it through, it's kind of obvious. Service for four is manageable because 
we entertain in smaller groups these days. 2020, we're entertaining in very tiny groups, but it's no longer a question of, you know, mom has the bridge club over and, you know, people just don't do that anymore. Now, if you have company for tea, it's a couple of people. It's not like a whole house full of people the way it used to be. So I will probably, like I say, break that set down a little. And I'm, I'm not exactly sure how much, but I will turn it into an even number because that is what people expect. But it's a lovely set. And at $28, I don't feel that it's out of line at all. So that started my adventure in teapotting. And we'll have, we have more of that to follow. However, um, I wanted to start on the second floor at Bedford again. And uh, the, the tea set just waylaid me. It's not my fault. I was minding my own business. It just screamed to me. As soon as I got out of the stairwell at Bedford, I immediately saw another piece that I decided oh, I must take home with me. So let's take a look at that. I just barely got up to the second floor, stepped off the stairs, and I saw this. This is a uh, 19th century snuff jar. That's what Paul's calling it, and he's usually right about these things. Seven dollars, as you can see. Um, we're looking at about, I'd say, seven inches tall. Obviously, you could put a stopper in there, but frankly, it's a beautiful, simple, I mean, very simple, uh, antique vase. So, I think this is going to come home with me. I'm not sure how that snuff jar was actually sealed. Um, I know I have gone out and gotten large rubber stoppers when I've had jars of that nature that I wanted to use. And I do like to use things like that. Um, if I have a nice jar, I'll stick tea in it or whatever. Uh, and that little jar seems to me to be a perfect candidate for that sort of you know, heavy household use. You know, you can either go out and get some chintzy plastic canister and stick your tea in it, or you can get a nice old piece. So my thinking is, let's go and get a nice old piece. Um, I think that is a piece that will make a lovely vase, you know, it's just, it's classic. It's, it's not one of those things that just grabs you instantly. Like, oh my goodness, isn't this a fabulous vase? But it would be very serviceable. It would go with all kinds of decor. But I am going to check out the cost on stoppers. Um, if I can get a stopper inexpensively enough, and, and I don't have a concern about getting them in the right size, that's easy. If I can get it inexpensively enough, still keep the total amount I have invested in the piece, you know, reasonable enough so that I can throw a couple of bucks on it, throw it in my Etsy shop, here we go, and it'll move out. I may well do that. By the way, too, I should mention this. While I was on the second floor, and I thought I got some film of this. I did not because I am not used to using my cell phone as a camera. So I think I was just sitting there talking with the cell phone turned off. What can I say? I definitely had a senior moment. It was an identical, absolutely identical piece in another booth with a price tag of $35 on it. So what that tells you is when you go through antique malls like this, you see something you like, check the other booths because I might have seen that $30, $35 piece first without realizing that there was a piece at like a fifth of the cost one booth over. 
So always check. Um, let's see. Oh, the next thing I picked up, that was one of Paul's pieces, by the way. I don't know if I mentioned it, but it was. Uh, the next thing I picked up was in one of Paul's other little nooks and crannies. And I want you to see this. This is the type of piece that used to be widely available and for some reason really isn't anymore. More's the pity. Let's take a look. This is another one of Paul's pieces, um, a refrigerator pitcher. $9. I'm going my hand in there. We're looking at about seven inches tall and probably eight inches across here. This is why I call it a refrigerator pitcher. It's thin, designed to slide in and out of the fridge easily and not take up a lot of space. Definitely an interesting piece. I have a feeling that is something that will sell. So, um, $9, I can afford to take a chance on it. I think that piece is fantastic. It is a stoneware refrigerator pitcher. And you notice the lines of that pit pitcher. It's long, it's squared off, um, narrow. It was designed to slide in and out of the refrigerator. When refrigeration first became a thing, people were designing all kinds of storage containers specifically for refrigerator use. Nowadays, when you see refrigerator jars and refrigerator pitchers, um, and they have whole sets that go into the refrigerator, my goodness, they are so expensive. Um, they're, mm, wow. And they're beautiful, That's so they're worth it. And that sort of a stackable, you know, squish them all together thing, we just don't do that anymore. And more is the pity, because even though our refrigerators are much bigger, and therefore we might think we don't have the need to conserve space in the fridge, our use of the refrigerator as, as a constant feature of our lives has altered our eating habits. It's altered our shopping habits uh, because, you know, nature abhors a vacuum and everything sort of expands to fit the available space. Our lives have expanded to fit 21 cubic foot refrigerators, whereas at the time that that little refrigerator pitcher was made, 10 cubic foot was probably more the norm. So I think it's a shame that we don't have them anymore, but I do think that as a refrigerator pitcher alone, that is a great little piece, very, very useful. Um, the next piece is a piece I did not bring home with me, but let's take a look at it because this is a piece that they are popular. If you see them, they will sell. What we have here is a honey jar. The spoon comes out here. $12. It's a pretty piece. Um, I think overall it's a good price, but I also don't think it's a very old. It doesn't look very old to me, and it's unmarked. Um, I'm thinking about it because, frankly, honey jars sell, and bees, for some reason, sell very nicely, too. So, I don't know. I'm going to go finish up on the second floor and then maybe come back for this. That is a wonderful little sort of beehive honey pot. Bees are popular sellers. People like bees. Uh, I, I'm, I see no reason why not. Bees are cute little things. Um, why bees in particular? 
I don't know. You know, I'm, why bees as, as opposed to hummingbirds or crickets? Can't say. But bees are popular. The reason I walked away from that piece was, one, I thought the price was a little high for the same amount of money. I certainly could have found something that would be um, uh, older, vintage. That piece was probably vintage, but not by much. It was probably pre-2000, eh, not 100% sure. It was a relatively new piece, and that was part of the reason for backing away. But as a relatively new piece, I just thought the price was too high. That is the sort of piece I would expect not to pay a vintage price for, but I would expect to pay a second-hand porcelain price for, if you catch the difference. So, that stayed. Uh, the next piece I want you to see stayed also. And this is another one of Paul's $19 lamps. Well, here is another one of Paul's $19 lamps. So let's see about getting in a little closer. It's a beautiful vase. The base is really well-sized to match the vase. And note, it's not just well-sized, it's in a style that matches the vase. I have a feeling this piece was assembled at uh, some sort of lamp shop that's awfully good work for, you know, a do-it-yourself lamp maker. Really pretty. $19? Jeez, that's a nice find. Doesn't work for me because there's between the shipping and the fact that it's got uh, a fairly high price, at least in terms of the things I buy, I'm not seeing a lot of options in terms of being able to sell this for a good profit. But boy, if I were in the market for a lamp myself, this would be coming home with me. Well, I thought that piece was just stunning. This is just a beautiful lamp. Um, it was very well thought out in terms of the uh, the shape of the vase and the base they used. I think this would have been manufactured that way. If this is something that a do-it-yourselfer did, I am impressed because most of the time a do-it-yourselfer putting a uh, base together as a lamp doesn't quite get it so perfectly. It was the right base for the right base with the right shade. Just really everything about it was excellent. That for $19 was fantastic. If I were looking for a lamp for my home, Oh, that would have come home with me in a heartbeat. But then again, the Chinese lamp I showed you a couple of weeks ago, another one of Paul's $19 lamps, absolutely would have come home with me as well. So, excellent lamps. Um, the problem I have with pieces like that is not that they are not great bargains. They are. But for my purposes, since I would be selling it online, the packing and shipping of a piece like that would probably make it cost prohibitive. So it has to stay, at least for the moment, until I can find a space for it in my own home. Um, next up is an item that I ordinarily shun. But in this case, I made an exception and it actually did come home with me. So let's take a look. Well, this piece is $2, and uh, they say it's a brass container. If you'll notice the cutouts all over it, it's really an incense burner. You would put a little cone of incense in the bottom, 
light it on fire, and then lock it up. And this allows for the relatively safe burning of incense. There's nothing exposed, nothing you can burn yourself on if your fingers get a little too close. $2, very good price. It's probably Indian. Uh, items like this were coming into the country just by the boatload um, back in the 70s, 80s, 90s. Two dollars is a good price, but I have no idea if my buyers are incense burners. Um, so I think I'm going to take it all the same. So why do I shun these pieces? Well, brass from India was flooding into the country in the last couple of decades of the 20th century, um, probably from 1975 onward. Uh, cheap, uh, pretty much poor quality, nothing special about it. If you look at it and say, oh, this is a pretty little piece of brass, that, that was about all you could say about it. Um, the pieces were not really well made. Uh, the brass is low grade brass. Um, cheap stuff, and it was all over the place. That piece, however, at $2, uh, as an incense burner, I think is something that I can take home, you know, clean it up. I'm not going to polish it. A lot of people really like that old patina on brass. I do not, but a lot of people do, so I leave it alone. Something like that is just sort of a quick and easy sale because someone will find it cute and because I'm not going to sell it for much. So it's going to be a relatively inexpensive goo for someone. Uh, but incense is resurging in popularity now. It was a big thing in the 60s, uh, you know, the, the sex, drug, and rock and roll generation. I remember them. Yeah, I was them. That generation, my generation, was really big into incense. Like, oh, the incense is so groovy, man. You know, literally, we said stuff like that, and we thought it was cool. Um, incense burners now, uh, and that would be the container that held your incense, are now becoming much more, um, well, they're becoming better quality, more decorator pieces. And I think a little piece like that in brass or with a patina that has a little bit of age to it, not a lot, it's vintage, but it's not antique. I think something like that is probably going to be able to find its own market today. Not a big deal one way or the other. It was sort of an impulse grab. But I don't think that it was a stupid impulse grab. I believe it's an impulse buy that I'm certainly going to get my money back on. Well, you know, $2. How could I not? Next up, another teapot. Well, here we have a pretty baby Japanese teapot. Uh, really nice. And turn it around. The side you just saw was the front. Nicely decorated on the back, too. Here's my hand. This is tea service for one, which was actually a pretty popular thing. Uh, this piece is $3, and it's red clay. And for people who actually drink tea, red clay is a really big deal. Um, yeah. The famous Brown Betty teapots were made of red clay. And they say it just ages beautifully and the tea just tastes better and better every time you use it. So, $3. Oh, yes. Well, that teapot 
is a really nice little Japanese teapot. Uh, small, service for one. I had a similar teapot in my Etsy shop. Uh, it sold quickly. Um, the other one was larger, but it did have some damage, which was repaired. This one has no damage, and frankly, I think it has a prettier design. Um, nice little piece. I don't think that's going to have any trouble finding itself a home. Um, because again, we're no longer looking at serving tea for the queen and the entire royal court. These days, tea is becoming a more personal adventure. Tea for one. That's not that unusual these days. Back in the 50s, yeah, it kind of was. But it's a cute little piece, and I don't think I'm going to have any trouble selling that. And when we move on, we have yet another teapot. So let's take a look at this one. Well, I was lured over by this piece. Very nice piece of pottery. The glaze work is, well, it's simple. The pottery is embossed, but still really beautiful, especially when it's caught in a good light. $35? No, not coming home with me. However, when I saw this, now I'm starting to think today is my day for teapots. Two dollars. Beautiful piece. Red clay again. Basically, this is a brown Betty. So, is it coming home with me? Oh, for two dollars. Goodness, yes. This teapot is basically a brown Betty. It doesn't have the exact shape of a brown Betty. A brown Betty is fat and round and it's a chubby teapot but it does have the same sort of clay and red clay and i mentioned this on one of the teapots i filmed i don't remember which one red clay is considered the most desirable clay for a teapot this little brown teapot is a simple style very nice a damage free pretty sure it's damage free it appeared damage-free. Let me just say that. Um, a nice Brown Betty-style teapot oh, with that red clay. And for a tea drinker, that's important. Also, again, tea, tea connoisseurs like brown teapots. Um, probably from the Brown Bettys, which are very popular and they're they're said to just get better and better with age so that was nice i did really like the vase that i saw just that was way too pricey she that was a pretty piece and that's what lured me over and then i spotted the teapot lurking in the back of another bookcase right next to it so the brown teapot came home with me and Finally, I want to show you a teapot that did not come home with me. Well, lesson in smart shopping. This teapot is $30. It's very nice. This cherry blossom pattern in luster wear is a relatively common Japanese pattern. The lid, as you can see, or perhaps not, the plain blue lid, the lid is not a match for this teapot. However, because this is a very common pattern, I have the matching lid. So, frankly, $30 for this with the wrong lid against $28 for a full tea set. Whoa. You know, all I had to do was just go downstairs. Also, the other teapots that I've picked up are considerably less expensive, two, three dollars. So, 
the thing is, you see something you like, oh, throw it in your bag, take it to the register, but don't actually buy it until you've had a chance to look at what else is available. That teapot was overpriced. Uh, frankly, uh, I would say even if it had a lid that perfectly matched, it still would have been overpriced. The lid that was on it, no, that was not the original lid. Those pieces and this cherry blossom pattern, this was a very common pattern in Japanese luster wear. So we all know what it looked like. There was a cherry blossom design on the front that crept up and a little bit of the cherry blossom design would have been on the lid to the teapot. Uh, so a lone teapot with uh, a luster wear, yes, but, but not original lid for that price, whoa, no. So what I hope I, I managed to sort of stress in this is look around. When you are at an antique mall, you'll see a lot of pieces like that teapot or that snuff jar for $35. You'll see pieces like that. And sometimes all you have to do is go to the booth right next door, literally just one aisle over, and you will find equally nice pieces for a fraction of the price. That teapot against the other teapots that I did. Re remember the the whole tea set, that blue and peach luster wear, entire tea set was only $28, less expensive than that one teapot. So shop around. When you are at an antique mall, take advantage of the fact that every shop, you know, down the aisle, is competing for your dollars with every other shop and they know this so they will price their goods competitively if they want to sell them so always keep your eyes out for bargains um, and don't just grab the first thing say oh pretty teapot oh somebody else may have a teapot just as pretty but a lot less expensive Okay, have a great day. We are going to finish up this shopping trip later. I do apologize for the filming on that. As I say, totally forgot my camera. It was just complete senior moment today. Well, a whole series of senior moments today. That was just one of many. I think I was walking around in a fog all day long. So, yeah, cell phone pictures. And I promise I won't do that to you. It's not, I'm not going to make a habit of that. All right. I will see you all tomorrow. Have a great day.